Hi everyone, my name is Toma Stomina, I'm a staff writer at the Kyiv Post and this is our newsy vlog. In case you were too busy to follow our coverage in print or online, I'm here to deliver the top news of the week. Yet another journalist in Ukraine has come under pressure from law enforcement. Ukrainian prosecutors have demanded that investigative journalist Ivan Verstyuk give them access to his emails. What? You guys aren't Facebook. Why do you get to violate people's privacy? The case concerns Verstyuk's story about former deputy general prosecutor of Kyiv Oblast Oleksandr Kornijets, published in a local magazine Nove Vreme. The story reveals how the prosecutor, who earns <laughs> the story reveals how the prosecutor, who officially earns $7,600 a year, managed to pay 120,000 British pounds for his daughter to study in the United Kingdom. Well, you know, a side hustle here, a side hustle there. But all jokes aside, the prosecutor in question is in fact being prosecuted for bribery. I know what you picture in suitcases of dollars, but actually it was diamonds. The authorities found 65 diamonds while searching the prosecutor's office three years ago. Although Karniets was fired right away, his case is still in the court. Now prosecutors claim that Virstuk's anonymous source for that story breached the confidentiality of the investigation. However, many see this as another attack on freedom of speech. Last year, the same court granted the same prosecutor's office access to phone data of a journalist of the same magazine. They never got the data because the journalist is currently challenging the ruling. Well, of course, in a country with thriving corruption, prosecutors have nothing else to do but investigate investigative journalists. Here is how fighting corruption looks like in Ukraine. Step 1. Pressure investigative journalists exposing corruption. Step 2. No stories about corruption in the media. Step 3. No corruption. Mission accomplished! The pre-election wars continue. Ukraine's Prosecutor General Yuri Lutsenko has taken aim at presidential candidates Anatoly Kretsenko and Yulia Tymoshenko. Both candidates are running against Lutsenko's boss, crony, choice for president and his favorite person in the world, <laughs> incumbent president Petro Poroshenko. Lutsenko ordered an investigation of all defense ministers who have served since 2004 in a case about embezzlement. Among them just happens to be Gretsenko, who served as a defense minister 12 years ago. Of course, you all wonder why it took Lutsenko so long to open such a case given that he's been the prosecutor general for almost three years and the matter is so old. The Ukrainian presidential election is scheduled for March 31st, 2019. Well, I don't have an answer for that. The other candidate, Tymoshenko, is in trouble for her connection with American lobbying firms. A third party hired lobbyists for Tymoshenko, but she claims she has nothing to do with that. The prosecutor general ordered an investigation into Tymoshenko after the independent watchdog Anti-Corruption Action Center filed an official petition to him to launch the proceedings. Oh, so he's now actually listening to the Anti-Corruption Action Center. Quick, guys, tell him about everything else that you know. Ah, never mind. The moment has passed. Given that Poroshenko is running for re-election this March, Lutsenko's move has been viewed as an attempt to put pressure on the president's rivals. In the latest poll by Kyiv-based think tank Krasumkov Center, Gretsenko ranked fourth, Tymoshenko was third, and Poroshenko second. Looks like someone doesn't enjoy others snapping at his heels. <laughs> Presidential candidate confused Adolf Hitler's program with his own. What? I need more sedatives. The leader of the Social Democratic Party, Serhii Kaplin, was being interviewed on the television channel 5 
when the host offered to discuss his election program. No surprise, Kaplan agreed. But when the host started reading the program aloud, Kaplan appeared to have a very short memory. The candidate didn't realize he was commenting not on his own program, but on the so-called 25-point plan announced by Hitler in 1920. Uh, After Kaplan was told it was Hitler's program, he said that some parts his program might match Hitler's. Well, thank you, Sergei Kaplan. Now we know why Ukrainian politicians never keep their promises. They just don't know what they're promising in the first place. For more Beyond Belief stories and political news, follow the Kyiv Post on YouTube and social media. Bye! Step 1 <laughs> Don't worry a lot. <laughs> Shine bright like a diamond!